Hello, I'm Mike Buzzer, this is my museum, and I'm the taxi dentist. Poor old ostrich died, skin it, and you can mount the whole ostrich up as well, so you can have two, a mounted ostrich, and a wrecked skeleton. So after you've cut all the meat off with a uh, you know, sharp knife, you do it in sections, like you cut, maybe you get all the bones mixed up, it's a big jigsaw puzzle. So I find the easiest way is to spread the whole thing out on the floor, <laughs> all in order. So cut it off in sections, in and, and you've got all the meat off, then boil it up. Then, when the meat starts coming off, I find the easiest way is a high pressure water blaster. Blow all the meat off, and that'll make the bones nice and white, and just get rid of all the meat on it. And then after you've done that, then keep it moist, or freeze it, and you just do all different sections at a time. That describes how we uh, do a skeleton with a, uh, a life-size mount of an ostrich. It's a big job to, to do. Basically, the animal's skin, from the brisket to the backside, and your skin like anything else. Just turn the whole thing inside out. Legs. Uh, turn the neck inside out and there's an incision up the back of the head here to get to the head. So you separate the two. The skin has to be treated, it has to be tanned. The glass eyes, they'd probably be uh, about 20, uh, yeah, 30 mil. Um, detailed, you've got a lot of air brushing to do around here. Could do a bit more colour around here. And it's just basically assembling the whole thing back together again. Yeah, well this one here has been in the freezer for about 10 years. This little uh, white tail black cocker too. Just cutting the string off it. It's just, just dry now. I mounted it oh, about three weeks ago. I'll try and mount them on, on it's probably a, a big piece of wood for a, a, a house, but for a museum it's, it's ideal because I try and um, point out that the, uh, this is what they nest in, big hollow trees. Uh, so this, this cotton, what I'm just cutting off, is uh, after the bird's been skinned, all the, uh, and you shampoo the bird, all the feathers and you blow it together with a hair dryer and the cotton holds the, uh, all the feathers in place while the skin dries, while the glue dries underneath, just to keep all the feathers down. This whole bird from start to finish has taken about three days. And I've been doing taxidermy for about 40 years. So we're at it all the time, every day, basically. Anybody coming into the museum is more than welcome to ask any questions at all. I try and do this work in front of people so I can get so many questions on how taxi doing is done. You've got to make up little artificial tongue, glass eyes. So you basically strip the whole bird right down. His beak is dried nice and clear. I might just hit it with the airbrush just on the opposite side of it. Just a little bit of white paint. The best way of mounting fish, all fish, is what we do is a fiberglass replica. Uh, this one's a coral trout. So we have the, the, the fish, we put it in a uh, lifelike position and we basically paint the fish in fiberglass to, to make the mould. This is the fiberglass mould here. Uh, so we wax that up and we paint fiberglass inside here and pull it out and you have a perfect impression of the reproduction of the fish. But we cut all the fins off beforehand because the, the mould will catch on all those and we put all those on separately afterwards. So, but the work is in um, 
airbrush and the fish afterwards. You might need to take a stencil uh, to, uh, to paint the whole fish up. Life will be going. So that's the best way of doing all fish. But there is another technique where you can mount, uh, do skin mounting of fish. Uh, skin mounting fish, there is a couple. Yes, there's a, uh, a parrot fish, a uh, freshwater brim up on the wall. But uh, the scales buck and twist and turn around with the skin mounting. So this technique, technique is, is, is the professional way to go. His name is Sam, this fella. So we had to make the mould, the vet had to put the poor thing down, it couldn't even stand up. And they're both brothers. The other one I'm just going to talk about was uh, Prince. Unbelievable lion. He was uh, the last of the bloodline. And I was told he was the best lion in Australia. He had a big mane, really hairy. And it was a beautiful piece. And I was mounting them both up and sending them both to Sydney. So we got this one finished and but I was just so busy at the time, I sent the skin of the poor old Prince over east to be tanned and shaved him down. The uh, Australia Post truck caught on fire in Kalgoorlie too. Unbelievable, it happened back in Kalgoorlie and Evelyn lost the skin up in, in, in the fire. So. Right. Shame we didn't have the, just finished the, uh, this mould he was off the uh, a very large dugite. Yes, about as tall as I am. Uh, in a striking pose. And basically we've got the fiberglass backing to keep the rubber mould steady. Oh, it just pulls right out. So you fill it all up with resin. It picks up all the detail, the scales, and it's a really good pose. And when it's full, you get like peeling an orange here. Take it all out. Peel the snake out. Uh, this one's a carpet python. It's another uh, reproduction. Uh, a lot of work in painting that one because of the pattern of the uh, of, of the uh, specimen. Yeah. And this other one here is a gulls monitor. And this is a different technique used on this one. This is a, a skin mount. Uh, artificial fiberglass rock. Insect cabinet, all the way from London. So, how do you stuff a tarantula? Well, you've got to take all the, um, all, like a big sack, and a lot of chunk in here too. So, you've got to get it all out. You make an incision underneath, suck it out with a syringe, use a syringe and pump it up to the natural size. So, what do you use to, to fill it? Uh, body filler. Mm, car, car body filler with the dents in the cars. Thanks for coming. You're welcome anytime here in James Street in